Hi, a very good evening all of you. So today's paper discussion part, 16th part, will focus on following topics. I hope you guys are all ready. So first we'll look into the following topic, long saphenous vein, some anatomy related to this. So let me know what the question is in specific. As you know, the protocol will update relevant information in description part of the video within 24 to 48 hours. So as you can see, the illustration of a long saphenous vein. So anatomy of long saphenous vein which starts in the foot from tributaries of dorsal venous arch, permits a reverse flow through its competent valves, ascends in front of medial malleolus and runs along the medial side of leg. It then ascends in tie and ends at a saphenofemoral junction by joining the femoral vein, which is almost one and a half inches or four centimeters below and lateral to pubic tubercle. It has around 15 to 20 valves and absence of valves results in varicose veins, right? Moving on, hypophosphatemia. This is one of the keywords which you received. And as you can see, this is a radiograph of familial for hypophosphatemia patient. So you can see uh, enlarged or extended pulp chambers as well as root canals, right? So let's review some information. A vitamin D resistant rickets or familial hypophosphatemia, also called as refractory rickets or phosphate diabetes. Oral manifestations include the following. Vitamin D resistant rickets have marked effects on teeth and supporting structures. They have been discussed in detail by many authors. And characteristically, there is histologic evidence of a widespread formation of globular hypocalcified dentin with clefts and tubular defects occurring in the region of pulp horns. In addition, these pulp horns are elongated and may extend often reaching nearly to DEG, as you can see in the illustration. This may be evident on radiograph, and because of these defects, there is commonly invasion of pulp by microorganisms without demonstrable destruction of tubular matrix, right? So let's move on to the next topic. So alkaline phosphatase elevated level. So these are the keywords which you received and you can find some relevant information in one of the PubMed indexed articles. So if you want a link to this article, just let me know in the comments below. I'll update the same description part of this particular video. So the principal clinical value of measuring serum alkaline phosphatase lies in diagnosis of cholestatic liver disease. So some of the highest elevations in alkaline phosphatase is present in patients with cholestasis. In fact, uh, there are several conditions where alkaline phosphatase levels increase. So this is the summary. Again, let me know what the question is in specific. Moving on, maxillary sinusitis, acute and chronic. So these are the keywords which you received. So here is some information from Schaefer's. Again, let me know if you need any further clarification. Alveolar abscess, again, acute or chronic. So these are both the keywords which you received. And this is some relevant information relevant to acute abscess. So acute periapical abscess also was slightly extruded from its socket is another keyword which you received. So I've highlighted the same. So review this information, which is from Schaefer's, right? Now, moving on orthostatic hypotension. So this is one of the keywords which you received. As you can see, orthostatic hypotension is defined as a decrease in systolic blood pressure of 20 mmHg or a decrease in diastolic blood pressure of 10 mmHg within three minutes of standing compared with blood pressure from sitting or supine position, right? And also you can find some additional relevant information over here. Moving on, DBT investigations and treatment are the keywords which you receive. So you can find the same from Manipal Manual of Surgery, General Surgery Textbook, right? So review this and again, let me know if you need any further clarification regarding the same. So deep vein thrombosis, let's review some uh, introductory part of this uh, for sake of completion of this topic. So it's also called as phlebothrombosis. It's an acute thrombosis of deep veins, hence the name deep vein thrombosis. Deep vein thrombosis is very common in Western countries, the exact cause of which is not known. Post-operative immobilization, pressure on calf muscles, long-standing sluggish blood flow and prolonged bed rest are various factors which precipitate deep vein thrombosis. So risk factors, commonly it affects venous sinuses and soleal muscles, it is common starting place. It can also involve pelvic veins. Moving on, aluminum particle size, these are the keywords which we received. So as you can see, 30 to 50 microns aluminum particles. Also, I received three options, 50, 75, 150. So you can choose the more appropriate one based on the information given in Philips. 
moving on calcium hydroxide so uh, various functions of calcium hydroxide or which of the following is not a function of calcium hydroxide so these are some keywords which you receive so as you can see calcium hydroxide elevated ph high ph stimulates formation of secondary dentin also it is antimicrobial and protects pulp or long term hence it is it's used as cavity liner as you're all aware of right i hope this information is helpful moving on to the final topic of this video titanium welding so uh, various lasers were uh, provided to us in keywords so here is some relevant information so recommended lasers for titanium welding as you can see carbon dioxide and yet fiber and disc and also argon was one of the keywords which you received i hope this information is helpful in answering a query right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this very short brief video on paper discussion uh, video series part 16 as you know the protocol uh, just drop a comment and we'll address your query or concern within 24 to 48 hours right so wish you all the best love you all keep smiling